working with dynamic objects and the object map using FrogLogic Squish. We'll begin by creating a new test case and recording against our sample application. This sample application happens to be an address book, and depending on the address book you have open, the name of the address book, the title bar of the window changes. However, the objects are the same. So you can see here we have just simply address book. If I open a new address book or create new address book, you can notice that the title bar changes and any interactions I do, since that's the parent window, will also contain a reference to that parent object with the unnamed name within the title bar. If I create another script, however, instead of having an unnamed address book, let's say I open up a different address book, I'm interacting with the same objects, but there's a slight difference in those objects as those objects are dynamic. Squish needs to understand those differences, and to do so, it can understand the differences by using the object map's wildcard or regular expression functionality. So here I have a different address book open, and you'll notice the title bar changes. So any interactions I do here, again, those parent objects contain the reference back to that title bar window. Let's click stop and see the two scripts that we created. So this is the second script that we created, and this one has the reference to the address book that I opened called My Addresses. You'll notice that that object is used at different places in my script. In the first script that we recorded, that title bar was called Unnamed, so any interactions were with that object. Now taking a look in our object map, if I right click on this symbolic name and select Open Symbolic Name, we can see the unnamed main window as well as, remember we have the one from when I was working with the My Addresses address book. They both, however, are the same object. So this is the Add button with the Q toolbar button. You can see the real name, how we're finding that object below. I click up here. It's the same object, however you'll notice its parent window is changing. So the way to best handle that, let's take a look at this unnamed main window. Instead of using an equals here, so a constant with this string, I can either choose to use a wildcard or a regular expression as my value instead. And that will allow me to handle this object as dynamic. So I'm using a wildcard, simply an asterisk, which says after this dash and then space, I don't care what the text is. To me, it's irrelevant. So I'll save those changes. And now I can use this object or this particular one instead of having multiple objects in my object map which actually refer back to the same object. Now you'll want to begin doing this early because what the options that you have is to then rename this. Let's say I just put an asterisk in here. So that going forward all of the new names are captured with this um, naming convention in mind, no new names are added to the address book that contain, for example, the name of the address book embedded within it. Now if you remember our two scripts are actually using the unnamed one as well as my addresses. So I can simply copy this object's symbolic name and go find where that's located in my script to update it. I can also use our search and replace feature. So here we have our Add button. I'm going to replace that here. And then I'm also going to go to the other test script where, let's see all the instances where I used it. Simply down here. Again, in a more realistic environment, you might use search and replace or simply leave that name as it was originally named 
and you don't have to make any changes to your script. So let's run this, save our object map changes, and now it will run using that new name instead of the original name that was recorded with it. The other thing that you can do is as we add new scripts now, instead of it entering a new object map entry, it will use that existing object map entry, the one using the wildcard or if we had used a regular expression, and in that case you won't be adding essentially what are duplicate entries with minor changes to your object map. So you'll notice it's automatically picking up and using the updated name. And if we go back to our object map, it hasn't added any new entries of different names that we've worked with. This one now, since we aren't using it in our script, or any of our scripts could be removed. Evaluate today. Go to froglogic.com evaluate for your free 30-day evaluation and also check out our resources at froglogic.com resources where you have access to our knowledge base, documentation, other videos, tech papers, and information, as well as emailing squish at froglogic.com for support.